Hello, my name is Guthrie. I'm here to talk about behavioral economics. And in today's topic, uh, we are going back, 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 back to 1956. One of the original thoughts about behavioral economics before uh, people even knew it was a field. So um, we are going back to Herbert Simon in his paper, 1956 paper, Rational Choice and the Structure of the Environment for an idea that he termed satisficing. So it's one of the first, uh, the earliest papers, you know, obviously Kahneman and Tversky in um, the mid-70s, late-70s were kind of, that's really when the field started to take off as a field. But there were various musings and ideas uh, before before then, and this and this one um, was, a, was a big one. So basically... Um, he invented this word, uh, satisficing, and it's a combination of sufficing, which means good enough, and satisfying, which, I, you know, when something is satisfying to you, it's good, it's, you know, it, it completes, you had a desire, and it completes your desire. So, um, you know, behavioral scientists today will use more complex terms, cognitive biases, prospect utility, uh, but sometimes you do hear people uh, throw out the word satisficing still. You'll see that in some books and papers and conferences and stuff. So I just wanted to make sure that you understood what the term meant and more importantly, what the f effect was behind it. Because whatever, you know, you know how we do these things. What the term is kind of doesn't matter. It is kind of this vague mishmash of weird human behavior. So here's a great example of how satisficing works. Let's say you have a craving for wonderful, highly crafted, delicious Mexican food. You just love Mexican food, and there is a specific restaurant across town that has the best Mexican food. Um, most people don't go there. They don't spend the money, they don't spend the time, they don't spend the effort. If you're craving Mexican food, what you actually might be craving is really a high quality Mexican food, but what you do is you go down the street to Chipotle and you get a burrito. And, <laughs> you know, it's enough, right? I have, I'm, I've been satisfied and I've sufficed, you know? I, I've, I've, I've quenched the craving, even though it wasn't the optimal choice for me in that moment. There may have been other optimal Mexican choices that actually would have increased my own utility. And again, we're assuming people for, again, it's it's a bad assumption, but if we if, if the computer program were to assume maximize the utility for this human, the computer would find good Mexican food. But we don't always, even if we make a decision that's in our best interest, we often do not make the best decision that's in our interest. And that is the cognitive bias, or that is the weird human quirk that is satisficing. We will we'll take, you know, I guess it's like it's doing C work or like B minus work. We're, we're not going to spend all the effort to do the A of what would really make us happy. We'll do a little bit. We'll do enough to so that our, you know, stomach shuts up. And we'll do enough so that we feel that we've done an okay job. We feel We don't feel that we've um, disappointed ourselves or let ourselves down. We've done something that's in our interest. It's just not the best choice in that situation for our own interest. Now, later, Kahneman Tversky would come along and invent prospect theory, and there's a lot more uh, more solid behavioral economic uh, bases um, and models. Uh, and I'm again, you know me, I don't get into the math. But you know, so so si um, Simon's paper has a lot of ma it's a model and math and all kinds of stuff, and and that sort of um, Th that model has mostly kind of gone by the wayside as as better economic conventions have come along. But um, he gets a lot of credit for thinking way ahead of his time about this kind of about weird human behaviors and then trying to put that into economic thinking. And it influenced a lot of the future um, behavioral economists that I talk about and all this. So that is satisficing. Uh, it's kind of a fun word. I wish we would go back to a time when uh, cognitive biases were not called heuristics or complicated terms, but um, we, like satisficing, a combination of sufficing and satisfying. It kind of makes sense. It, it, it It's to the point. It's short. It's succinct. I like those. So props to um, Herbert Simon, and I will talk to you all later.